Hi, I'm Ron Ryback. I'm with Ryback and Ryback Incorporated, and I'd like to introduce you today to our sleeve maker, which is a solvent seaming machine for making individual hand seam samples. The unit comes to you just like you see it here. It has three individual solvent pens, it has a cutting unit, the clamp for the cutter, a center plow section, and adjustable forming fingers. The fingers are adjustable so you could get any lay flat from a 55 millimeter up to a 400 millimeter lay flat sample making this uh, with this unit. All you have to do is simply unlock the clamps and slide them side to side until you get the desired lay flat that you're trying to achieve. You can see at the top and the bottom there's a ruler that runs along here and on the edge of the clamp, it may be hard to see in the video, but on the edge of the clamp you're really looking at an arrow and you're going to slide this over until you line up the arrow with the desired lay flat that you're trying to achieve. You're going to line it up at the top and the bottom. Once you line it up, you're going to lock the clamps in place. You're going to repeat the same process on the left hand side clamp. Again, using the scale for size and the arrow to get the exact size. Once you do that, again, you lock the clamp and you're ready to make a seamed sample. Each unit comes with three refillable pens. To fill the pen, you simply unscrew the top. We supply you with a small funnel. You insert the funnel and you put the desired solvent in there. You're going to use on a given substrate. Now one trick when you're filling this pen is you can see on the inside, you can't see it in the video, but you'll see it as you fill it, there's threads going down. And the threads go down just about to where my finger is. You want to keep the level of solvent about a quarter of an inch below the edge of the thread. So when you tighten this back up, the solvent doesn't come out the top. Now once I get this snug, I'm going to take a wrench and just tighten it up gently because I don't want this to leak. Now that I have solvent in my pen, the next thing I'm going to do is insert the wick. And we send the wicks with the kit. You have 20 spare wicks. All you simply do is take the wick and insert it. And as I insert it, I'm gently screwing this side to side. And it helps you're really trying to fit a square wick into a round hole and this is the easiest way I found to do it. To get the correct height of the wick you're going to come down here and it's very difficult to see in the video but there's a small line on this unit right here and I'm going to adjust this wick so it's the same length as the line when I hold it up against the side here. That'll give me the correct length of the wick. Now that I'm ready to make a sample, I'll take my sleeve sample and what I want to do is leave a little extra at the top and the bottom of the sleeve so as I'm applying solvent and as I'm cutting it, I have enough to be able to cut a good edge along the, the edge of the material. I first want to raise the center section up, the two clamps, the center unit, and both forming fingers. Now that I have these up, I'm going to position the sample in the machine so my seam area, my 5 millimeter seam area, is on the left hand side, my 1 millimeter is on the right hand side. Once I have it in the correct orientation, I'm going to lower the center clamp and then the right hand forming finger. Once that finger is in position, I'm going to fold the web over and what I'm trying to do is line this up to the line, there's a left hand engraved line in the center section, I'm lining it up to that line. And as I line it up, I'm pulling tight because I want to be sure that I'm perfectly straight along that line. 
Once I have it in position, I'm going to lower my right hand clamp. The clamp is held in place with a magnet, so it can't move once you lower it. I'll then lower my left hand forming finger and gently fold the material over. Now, as I fold the material over, there's a line on the right hand side of the center section. And that line lines up with the edge of my five millimeter clear area at the top and the bottom. When that lines up, it gives me a seven millimeter overlap. And that's sort of an unwritten industry standard. If you want to use less than that, uh, you could adjust your uh, five millimeter to four millimeter clear area, but it'll work with either. Once I have it into position, I'm going to be certain that I pull the material tight and lower the left hand clamp. I'll then take the center plow and I'll put it over the right hand clamp, gently lifting the left hand web. So as I position the plow, it rides over the right hand side of the film while holding up the left hand side. And I'll position this so it's just covering the edge of the film and I'm looking through the hole right here. I'm now going to take my pen and prime it. As I push down, I'm going to push down for about three seconds until the tip becomes wet. Now I insert it, I insert it in the hole of the plow, gently push down and slide forward. As I slide this forward, I'm going to take my finger and push down where the solvent is just to stick the two materials so my solvent doesn't evaporate quickly. I could then take the supplied roller and roll this down. Remove my plow, lift the fingers up. Now I have a solvent seamed hand sample. The next thing I'm going to do is cut the sample. In order to cut it, I'm going to raise the clamp, slide the material under it, gently push down on the edges, and I'm going to align the edge of my copy here with the engraved line that's in the bed of the machine. If I line it up properly, I'll end up with a two millimeter clear area after I make my cut. I then push down on the clamp, put my cutter in the slot, and the cutter is spring-loaded. You can see as I push down. I'll gently push down and slide forward. It cleanly cuts one edge. I'll repeat the same process on the other side. Again, lining up my edge so it lines up exactly to the line in the bed of the machine. Again, pushing down slightly on the clamp, pushing down back on the cutter, and sliding it forward. Now I have a solvent seamed hand sample that I have a two millimeter clear area at the top, two millimeter clear area at the bottom. Since this is in a tube form, now I could rotate this any position I want to determine my seam location and fold location. And once I do, I could just gently put a fold in it. I have my solvent seamed hand sample. This sample will allow you to take this piece of material, this shrunken, this sleeve, put it in a, a tunnel, a steam tunnel, a sample maker, a, a blower, whatever method you're going to shrink this with, it, it will hold uh, the, the tension and pressures are created during that process.